Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, my name is Shayla. I am here at my in my greenhouse. I'm on our small homestead uh, that we call the High Water Homestead. Um, today I am going to be talking about some failures and some planning with more tomatoes. Um, my last video I posted recently, I was talking about um, transplanting and up potting some tomato plants that I had started from seed back in the first week of March, which is about the time that I like to start my tomatoes here in zone 6B. And they had gotten too big and too uh, cluttered in their cells that they were sharing. And I up potted them and moved them into their own individual red solo cups so they can continue to grow and um, have the nutrients they need up until I plant them out um, in mid-May or so after our last frost date. But I also wanted to show you guys um, some of my new tomato seeds and varieties that I got this year that I had started in my house um, several weeks after I had started my first round of tomatoes. The tomatoes that I had started in March were seeds that I had already had that I had grown before. And then I got some new tomato seeds that were varieties that I am trying to um, introduce to my our homestead and, and what we grow because I'm trying to be a little bit more intentional about the stuff that we are planting and not just planting things that are interesting or cool or whatever, um, but planting them for a purpose and that purpose being for us to use and to eat. Um, and it's important to grow what your, your family is actually going to eat. So the new tomatoes that I got this year that are new to our garden, um, I have here the Mortgage Lifter. And this one's actually something that a lot of people here local in West Virginia, um, where I'm from, are very familiar with them for good reason because they are from um, a gardener, a tomato gardener in Logan County, West Virginia, which is not very far from here where I live in Cabell County. Um, I'm from Lincoln County, so it's like basically right next door. Um, and these I got specifically for that reason because they are, they were bred here, they're designed to grow here, and they would do great here um, in the really hot, humid, and sometimes really wet seasons that we get here in West Virginia um, that can cause issues with certain tomatoes if they're not uh, developed for that kind of uh, environment. So that is one tomato I got um, for that purpose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I also got several other tomatoes that I really specifically wanted for the purpose of um, canning for things like sliced tomatoes, diced tomatoes, um, not sliced, diced, and uh, making things like tomato, um, uh, spaghetti sauce, and also pizza sauce, um, things and salsa, things that we buy from the grocery store all the time that are super easy. The ingredients are very simple that you can grow right on your property um, and not a lot of space. And the reason I got these certain ones, these are all from Baker Creek. Again, I love Baker Creek um, heirloom seeds, but this one is called Pink Fang. It has a really unusual uh, shape there, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, and these ones are good for um, paste or marinara. So that's one of the reasons why I got that one. And then also here we have your Amish paste tomato, which um, as it says, great for canning and paste, things like that. So that is why I bought those seeds and wanted to try them and add them to my garden, among the other things that I already do grow. Um, if you want to look here and the reason why today I'm talking about failures. So I let some of my, these new tomatoes that I got, I planted them indoors like I always do under artificial lighting and then they were not getting enough light. Okay. When seeds don't get enough light and that can happen really quick. I didn't have enough artificial light on them. So they started getting leggy. Okay. And that term means... You can see here, they get their, their actual, the plants get really, really tall, okay? And the leaves are at the very, very top. They tip over, they're not starting out to stand up. Um, and see here, some of these are actually laying down, which they are in my greenhouse now, and the wind has kind of been blowing in here a little bit, and they're not used to that. But see, so some of these ones are not that leggy, okay? Oh, there's the wind right there. Um, some of them are not that leggy. Some of them are. And I'm going to leave these tomatoes here and continue to let them grow and see what happens. I'm not going to get rid of them or anything. But because I've let them get this leggy and because these are some tomatoes that I really 
really want to have in my garden this year, I am going to replant them. Um, and this is the middle of April. It's actually Easter's tomorrow. So we have about a month until it's time to go in the garden with our tomatoes and our peppers and things like that, our hot heat loving plants. Um, and all of these tomatoes and in general, tomatoes need to be planted about six to eight, six to 10 weeks before they go out into their permanent space where they're going to be in your garden and where you're going to grow them. Um, so regardless, um, with all this being said, it's not too late to start growing tomato seeds or pepper seeds. Peppers take quite a bit longer. They really do. Um, but again, I would not say don't start them, start them, see what happens. Peppers for me are one of the last things that, um, I can stop harvesting from in the garden once the frost comes because they, they do so well in that heat here up until the last frost and we can have really warm falls or winters, right? Um, so I wouldn't say don't plant them, just get them in the ground and, or get them in your seeds, in your trays and start them and see what happens. And then you'll know, um, going forward, if that really is a time that's too late for you to start something or not, um, in your season, depending on your growing zone, your growing, uh, hardiness zone and your, uh, first and last frost date. So when planting tomatoes, you always want to look on your seed packets and almost all should tell you the depth at which you're going to plant your seeds. So tomatoes, one eighth of an inch. Okay. Tells you right in the back there. One eighth of an inch is how deep. And the reason you plant it at a certain depth is because your seeds only have so much energy to get from the soil and sprout into that first sprout. Okay. So if you plant them too deep and they don't have the energy to come out, then they're not going to be able to sprout. The bigger the seed, typically the deeper you can plant them. Um, so for your tomatoes, I am going to plant. So I've got these cells here. Let me show you what I'm doing this time. So instead of planting them in smaller cells, I went ahead and got them in a, a little bit deeper cell. And these are about half the size of what they would be if I transplanted them up into the red solo cups. So about half the size. Um, and because we don't have that long until it's time to actually plant in the soil, I'm not going to worry about giving them this full cup because they're going to be in here for about a month and then they're going to go straight into the garden. So, and what I do whenever I fill up my cells to plant in them, you want to uh, use a really good potting soil, um, something that has nutrients in it. Sometimes seed starting um, soils do not have really good levels of nutrients in them, which you would think that would be the whole sole purpose of them, but some of them don't, okay? Um, so make sure you're buying something of quality that has the nutrients that your plants are going to need, especially for things that are going to be in the garden for a long, or, sorry, not in the garden, in your greenhouse or in your house for a long time until they go out into the ground. So once you do get them, get your soil, you're going to put it in here and you're going to make it, you're going to actually compact it down a little bit. You're going to press it all in, make sure there's no pockets or places that anything can shift around. And something else you got to watch too, um, sometimes your soils, they'll have chunks of these big pieces of like wood or materials that were in there and try to get those out if you can. Um, sometimes you'll have sticks, like some of these things are not that bad. Then you'll have some that are like pretty good size and that can affect the way your um, little small seedlings or roots are going to grow in these uh, cells. So very simply for tomatoes, you want to have very small you're basically just scratching the surface of your cell. And I am not going to plant a ton of seeds in each one of these cells because I don't want to waste these seeds. Um, and they didn't come with a whole lot, which I am going to save some of these, a lot of these seeds, seeds this summer, this summer, so that I'm not having to buy them every year because seed, buying seeds can be expensive. Um, especially when you're like me and that's what you would rather buy than clothes anything else. I would rather spend all my money on buying seeds than anything else, but then it can also be costly. Okay. So I'm sorry if I keep talking and not putting my head directly down. I'm trying to play in here. My camera's down low. Um, but I just want to get, show you guys kind of what I'm doing here. I need to get me a chair to put in here. So your Amish paste tomato. Now I'm going to plant, I have, I think this is Three, six, nine, twelve, okay. eighteen cells. So I'm going to do six a piece of each kind. So I'm going to plant two seeds in there, 
just in case one doesn't germinate, which from the other ones I planted, all of them germinated, looks like. So sometimes you'll have a batch of seeds if they're old or just whatever that will not germinate well. And then you wasted some time, right? Because your seeds didn't come up. Okay. So that was the Amish paste. And I am so terrible about not labeling these. Um, so I try to always stick a label in there. I don't do a bunch of them, but I try to do a couple. Now these are just like plastic little labels and I got like they're multicolored. I got these from Amazon for, I don't know, a bunch of them for like under 10 or $15. So I try to reuse them, but they're perfect for labeling, permanent marker. And then I just stick them in like one and that'll cover this, this area for where I just planted this. And I'll show you guys, see the seeds. They're not super deep. I mean, they're, ba they're barely in there. And when I cover them, I'm going to literally just easy scratch the surface and put them back in brassicas, like your greens, spinach, kales, all those things. They're also pretty difficult to plant because they're so tiny and their seeds are so tiny and they don't need to be planted very deep either. Um, so that's one of the reasons why they're so hard to grow and start, but I do like to sow them inside like my um, tomatoes and peppers and things like that, just because if something doesn't germinate, you'll know why. Like it's something wrong with the seeds more than likely versus um, something's got them outside a critter, something's got them and kept you from growing them. Okay, so I paused the video so that I could get these planets. You weren't just sitting here watching me put some seeds in the soil, but got, I have got all three of my, um, different types of tomatoes that I want to make sure I have in my garden this year. I have them reseeded and something I'm going to do since they're going to be outside my greenhouse now. So temps have been staying pretty good at nighttime. I have my little heater in here in case the temps do get kind of low and it needs to supplement, um, at night. But in the daytime, like right now it's almost 80 degrees here in my greenhouse. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this plastic cover and again, I'm not a fan of plastic, but when it comes to reusable plastic, and especially with gardening, I think it's really a good resource. I'm going to put my plastic cover on here because this is going to also help trap heat. And that heat is going to help these tomato seeds germinate quicker um, because of that. Now, when they're in your greenhouse, you have to monitor your soil um, moisture level a lot more than you would have to if it's in your house. Um, it's going to dry out in here a lot quicker because of that heat plus the sun the light and the heat together, it's gonna make a, a, your soil dry, dry out a lot quicker, which is not good for um, seedlings to have to deal with. It's, it causes stress for them. So I'll have to monitor that a whole lot better um, while they're out here. But if you're doing all of your seeds starting and growing inside, um, it's a little bit different, especially even if you're in windows, like a really good southern facing window, um, you still have to monitor that moisture level, um, but it's not gonna dry out as quick as it would if, you were, if they were in a space where it's 80 degrees like in a greenhouse or if they're inside in your house where you're going to keep it around like high, upper 60s probably or like mid 70s um which is not going to dry out your soil um, as much as it would if it's outside so that's all i have for today um we're just finishing up getting caught up in the greenhouse here with all of our seeds and transplants um i hope everybody's having a good garden season so far so far and um, remember if you haven't planted your seeds yet or you've started late that's fine you've got time do it get them in the soil, get them in the ground, make a plan, order your last seeds. I have several more different, several more, lots more varieties of things I'm trying to order before um, the last frost date comes in here uh, for us in our gardening zone. So for now, I just want to say, remember anytime that you can go out and be in the garden or uh, cooking dinner or anything with your family, that is a good day and something you should be thankful for.